Good morning. Welcome to St. Mary's Church of St. Mary Parish. Today we celebrate the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant for our Mass is our pastor, Father Lerner, and the special intention for this Mass is for Kevin Nichols. Today's readings can be found in the Red Worship Hymnal, number 962. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. i 
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe is as a grain from a balance or a, morn a drop of morning dew come down upon the earth. But you have mercy on all, O Lord, because you can do all things, and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you love all things that are and loathe nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you would not have fashioned. And how could a thing remain unless you willed it, or be preserved had it not been called forth by you? But you spare all things because they are yours, O Lord and lover of souls, for your imperishable spirit is in all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders little by little, Warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing, that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you, O Lord. The Word of the Lord.
reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was the chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, Come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw all this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you.
Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Today salvation has come to this house and to the crowds, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. Who was this man? Who was Zacchaeus? And what made him climb the tree that day? Zacchaeus is the last person named in what is referred to as the travel section of Luke's gospel as Jesus makes his way to Jerusalem. And Luke identifies him as the chief tax collector. One wonders, perhaps, whether Zacchaeus could very well be the tax collector we heard about in the previous section from the gospel last week, the one who was praying in the temple at the same time as the Pharisee. Recall the two were praying. Recall the Pharisee's prayer, something like, Oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity or like this tax collector over here. You're welcome, God, for making such a holy guy like me. Thank God indeed. Zacchaeus, we know, would have been despised by the people of Jericho. He wasn't just a tax collector. He was the chief tax collector. He was good at his job. He worked directly for the Romans. He would have overseen the work of low-ranking tax collectors, serving an important role, a key role, and a corrupt system that was based on abuse of power and greed. Zacchaeus rose up through the ranks. He had grown wealthy through extortion and taking advantage of others, his own people, and he was hated for it. As one commentator reflects, what values had Zacchaeus compromised? What people had he defrauded? What relationships had he sacrificed? But what happened in the life of that tax collector? What led him to the temple that day, where in a moment of total clarity, he came face to face with the awful truth about who he was and what he had become. Then filled with shame, he could just about barely raise his eyes to heaven, and beating his breast, he prayed, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Remember, what Jesus said about the two men who were praying in the temple. At the end of that passage, he said, the latter, the tax collector, one of the most despicable human beings in society at that time, the latter, and not the former, went home justified that day. Maybe on his way home, Zacchaeus, already a changed man, had the, heard the commotion in the streets, saw people running past him, crowds gathering to see Jesus passing through Jericho on the way to Jerusalem. Maybe Zacchaeus was that tax collector. Or maybe Zacchaeus heard about Jesus. Maybe he'd heard one of Jesus' parables. Maybe he heard the one about a tax collector someone like himself, someone who was unforgivable on account of their many unforgivable sins, a tax collector who received God's mercy. And now he wants to see who Jesus was. Could he be sent by God, who, as the writer of the Book of Wisdom we heard in the first reading, who has mercy on all, who loves all, who spares all because his spirit dwells in all and they belong to him, who rebukes sinners that they may repent. Maybe Zacchaeus, like you and me, heard a parable about someone who was so far gone, so lost and hopeless, so seemingly far beyond the grasp of God's mercy. But in a moment of clarity, in a moment of humility, of honesty, their heart was moved to seek out the living God, the one whom the psalmist reminds us lifts up all who have fallen and raises all who are bowed down. That God lives and moves among his people, 
and the person and works and actions of Jesus Christ, who comes to seek and to save what was lost. And so Zacchaeus runs ahead to climb that tree to see who Jesus was. Luke reminds us again and again that no one, no one is beyond the view of God's loving gaze. No one is beyond the grasp of God's mercy and no one, not a single person, is beyond saving. Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. And the twist is, Jesus sees Zacchaeus. See, the crowds, we look a person up and down. The crowds estimate and label. The crowds define one's stature, condone or condemn, then treat them accordingly. Jesus sees into the heart, into the depths of the darkness and the goodness that lies there. Jesus sees the whole person and that this person too is a child of God. Interestingly, Zacchaeus' name means pure. Perhaps Jesus saw beyond the sin, underneath the job title, the label, all of it, and glimpsed the pure one who was created by God from the beginning. So there's hope for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus climbed the tree, and he would not let anything, his lowly stature or the crowd, keep him from Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus, and Jesus saw him and called him down from the tree so that Zacchaeus could receive his true stature from God. Jesus did not wait to be invited into Zacchaeus' home and into his life. Rather, Jesus invited himself. He did not wait for Zacchaeus to apologize. He didn't wait for Zacchaeus to show true contrition or repentance. He didn't wait for Zacchaeus to make an act of restitution, all of which he did tenfold. But the crowd, looking on, does not approve. Luke tells us that everyone, everyone looking on, this would include the Pharisees, of course. It would also include the disciples following closely to Jesus and watching, the full-time religious people, those who justified themselves in their own eyes, the exalted righteous ones, everyone in that crowd looked on and grumbled. Why? Why would Jesus want to dine in the house of a person who is the chief of sinners? Why would Jesus want to dine in the house of this filthy, despicable person? Scandal. But we have seen it again and again and again. As in Jesus Christ, God defies our expectations, shatters our shallow categories of who is saved and who is condemned, of who's in and who's out, who ought to be first and who ought to be last in the kingdom of God. And as always, Jesus makes the first move with the sinner. And this sinner, Zacchaeus, received Christ with joy. Joy is the natural response to the presence of God. How joyful are we? If there is hope for someone like Zacchaeus, there is indeed hope for us. Who among us in our search for Jesus Christ does not desire to really see and to be seen by Jesus? So perhaps sometimes we lack the courage or we lack the trust to let Jesus really see us. Despite that, Jesus never stops searching. No shallow estimation of stature, fear of shame or humiliation or the superficiality of the crowd can prevent God from seeking us out and saving what was lost. The story began with the image of Zacchaeus, the hopeless sinner seeking Jesus.
And at the story's end, we hear it was Jesus who is seeking Zacchaeus. As the story reveals, to find God is to be found by God who has been looking for us all along. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the righteous Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed. For his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. That the Holy Catholic Church may continue to welcome those who seek forgiveness and inner peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who direct business and industry may be generous and just, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that sinners may be drawn back to the sacrament of penance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many souls from our parish will respond generously to their vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, Christian marriage, and consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the New Haven Catholic Parish family, may we come to know, love, and serve the Lord and one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, in a special way at this Mass, we remember Kevin Nichols. May they rest in eternal peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. For these and for the needs of our entire parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion, and grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our honor and the laws of the church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. 
Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, and whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in, through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim you. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Leonard our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
take refuge, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, my happiness lies in you.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. All are welcome to attend our All Saints Day prayer service, Saints of the Modern World, that'll be at 7 p.m. on Monday, October 31st. That's tomorrow evening here at St. Mary Church at 7 p.m. And all are encouraged to bring their personal relics of the saints for this uh, special vigil. Um, also, so you may be aware, this is the second anniversary, anniversary of the beatification of Blessed Michael McGivney. So when we pray together the McGivney prayer at the end of the Mass, just keep that especially in mind as you make your petition, um, as we continue to pray uh, that Blessed Michael McGivney may be advanced to sainthood. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is in. Thanks be to God. God our Father, protector of the poor and defender of the widow and orphan, you called your priest, Blessed Michael McGivney, to be an apostle of Christian family life and to lead the young to the generous service of their neighbor. Through the example of his life and virtue, may we follow your Son, Jesus Christ, more closely, fulfilling his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the Church. Let the inspiration of your servant prompt us to greater confidence in your love, so that we may continue his work of caring for the needy and the outcast. We humbly ask that you glorify blessed Michael McGivney on earth, according to the design of your holy will. Through his intercession, grant the favor I now present. Through Christ our Lord, St. Michael the Archangel, Defend us in battle, and be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our final hymn is number 607. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Number six, zero, seven.